Give us the insurrectionist, the murderer. You crucify Jesus. And in that moment, Mark shows us through the story what an exchange looks like. Consider ourselves in that place of guilt and condemnation, deservingly so, and to have mercy flood over us when the Son of God Himself exchanges places with us. What is the work of the cross? And Mark has an answer for us. Now Mark is not a systematic theologian. He wants to talk about the work of the cross, but he doesn't have a lecture, he doesn't have a textbook, he doesn't have a paper. He has a story. You might call it Mark's narrative theology of substitution. He's introduced us to this chap named Barabbas, unfortunate fellow as he is, at least as far as he knows. We are told that he is no common criminal, he's an insurrectionist. He and some others led an uprising, some people died, now he's waiting to be crucified. Bad guy, at least as far as Rome is concerned. And they're going to shame him, and they're going to torture him, and he's going to die. Remember, Pilate's the kind of guy who likes to poll well. So he's going to test the crowd a little bit. Hey guys, I know you don't like this Jesus guy. He doesn't seem all that bad to me. Why don't we let him off? I always let somebody go. We can let him go, and it'll be fine. Just This, this is what we do. But they don't respond to that, do they? Not, at least not the way he wanted them to. Instead, they call for Barabbas from death row. Give us the insurrectionist, the murderer. You crucify Jesus. And in that moment, Mark shows us through the story what an exchange looks like. He shows us what it looks like when an innocent man dies in the place of a guilty man. And he invites us, Mark does, to put ourselves in that very spot. I wonder if you notice the name Barabbas. The prefix bar just means son of. You catch the second half? Abba. Means what? Father. So his name is kind of generic, isn't it? <laughs> it just means son of a father, son of the father. Mark invites us to consider how someone becomes a child of Jesus' father. Invites us to consider ourselves in that place of guilt and condemnation, deservingly so, and to have mercy flood over us when the Son of God Himself, innocent in every way, exchanges places with us. Mark doesn't give us a fancy lecture on the intricacies and varieties of atonement theory. You can find that on the internet if you'd like to. Mark gives us a story about a guilty and con condemned man who goes home at the end of the day and lives. Not because he's deserving, because Jesus died in his place. 